Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Smart and Safe Small Business Podcast. I am Alex from Tax Valet, and I'm here with Tyler Jeffcoat, who owns and runs Seller Accountant, where his team provides bookkeeping and financial coaching services for e-commerce services. Welcome, Tyler. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me. So tell me, Tyler, who's your ideal client? Who do you primarily work with? So our, our best customer, they have to be e-commerce or we won't do the work for them. It's, that's how focused we are as a firm, but half a million or so a year in revenue up to about 10 million a year, uh, e-commerce native brand looking to grow, potentially looking to exit, uh, that needs to get accounting off of their plate, bookkeeping and CFO are really the services we provide. So tell me, what is one specific problem that you help your clients solve on a regular basis? Yeah, the one that comes up all the time is, I think I want to sell my business at some point and my broker is telling me that I need books that reflect reality. And so this idea of helping our customers create investor grade financials is I think really our sweet spot in the market. Got it. And so what are some typical symptoms that people are experiencing with that problem? Maybe they're aware of the problem. Maybe they aren't. Yeah, I think the most common issue with bookkeeping is either opting out. I don't like accounting. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to, I want to focus on other things. And so we don't know the answer to the fundamental question, did I make money last month? I think that's the biggest error. And then even for sellers or e-commerce brands that really get focused on accounting, a lot of times they're using a cash basis or overly simplified version of the accounting. And as a result, they still can't answer the question because their sales and their cost of goods sold are not matched up properly. And so I think that's the biggest mistake is whatever you need to do to make sure you can understand your profitability. And then the, maybe another mistake to add is it's really tempting to kind of get ahead of your skis a little bit, Alex, and spend too much money on overhead too early. And so frankly, I'm part of that. I mean, you and I are both part of that, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we, we run firms where a lot of times our responsibility is to go to a smaller seller and say, here's a way you can learn to do this yourself for a little bit. Don't while. hire me. <laughs> Don't yeah. hire me. It's not time. You're not ready. Yeah. Exactly. So what are the common mistakes that people make when they're trying to get investor grade financials? You can, there's two extremes. You can either overcomplicate things. You know, you try to put every single expense in a different category. And all of a sudden you look at a profit and loss that has a hundred lines. Yeah. Your investor doesn't want to see that. The other extreme would be I have, I am so simple that every time uh, say an Amazon payment comes into my checking account, I literally just hit add and I'm not splitting out the expenses. I'm not splitting out the refunds and both extremes are bad. So for, for a seller that wants to get to an investor grade level where they can get financing from a bank, they might be able to go to a broker and sell their business. Having that sweet spot of what's the minimum amount of information that allows a savvy investor to understand the story of my business. They can tell the story uh, that it, that's easy to follow. It's understandable. There's integrity. And I think that finding that sweet spot instead of tossing everything in one bucket or making 550 buckets, I think that's probably a pretty common error. So what are some of those things that, um, that really should be included? That's not overkill. Um, you mentioned refunds. You, you mentioned the processing fees. Um, what are the things that, that you commonly come, come up against with e-commerce businesses? Yeah, so per sales channel, a really, a really classic example would be uh, a product seller that has, you know, maybe 75, 80% of their sales coming from amazon.com. And then maybe, maybe they have a Shopify site. So that's kind of a, a really common use case. What I would say is you want to have each of those sales channels separate so that I could look month over month and say, here's the money that came from Amazon. Here's the money that came from Shopify and, and eBay or whatever other sales channels you might have. And then within each sales channel, I want to understand the, the, the modifying accounts, Alex, that you just mentioned. I want to understand the impact of refunds, promotionals, uh, kind of discounts and shipping income so that I can really understand after refunds what I'm, I'm making from the channel. And then on the cost of goods sold side, man, it's so important, Alex, that I understand on an accrual basis what my costs were for a given month uh, because sales is vanity, profit is sanity, right? So this idea of I, I, I did a million dollars in sales last year, I don't care. Investors don't care. They want to know how much profit you're making. And so really teasing out fulfillment related expenses, maybe like an FBA pick and pack um, or, or maybe merchant fees, like a commission. 
um, and then having accrual based cost of goods sold, which means I'm going to just expense the units I actually sold this month. Man, that gives such a clean picture to investors and they love that. Got it. That's great. So what is one free resource that you would direct people to who want to learn more about how to get their books in order and um, what it takes to have investor grade books? Yeah. So a, a couple of quick freebies here. If you go to our website is selleraccountant.com. If you go to selleraccountant.com slash resources, uh, we have a bunch of free stuff. We have a free ebook there that we've published about how profitable your e-commerce business should be. I'm kind of a book nerd, so I wrote book reports on about 50 of my favorite business books for personal development. And then I have a, a third thing I'll mention is um, if you look up the Seller Accountant YouTube channel, I, I release a video blog every Tuesday that's all related to how can we make more money in this e-commerce business. I think those would be great places to start. That's great. So last question here. What is one question that I should have asked you, but I didn't? And the answer, please. Yeah, so here's the question that every seller, every e-commerce brand owner needs to wrestle with is, how do I understand my portfolio level profitability versus my micro or product level profitability? And so, um, Alex, the things that we just talked about related to fees, related to refunds, if you have a good accounting system, you know, I, I guess I sell bookkeeping, right? If you have, you have good accounting, you can tell that macro level, how profitable is my portfolio in a given month? but you're still gonna have to put together some kind of a toolkit to understand each product. And if you have a really complex catalog, let's say you have like more than hundred SKUs, you're gonna really wanna understand it on a product level. And here's what I mean by that, not to get too technical, but you might spend advertising dollars on one of the child ASINs and it actually drives traffic to another one that converts. And so I don't wanna fire the SKU just because mm -hmm. I clicked on it. I wanna understand that product as a parent, uh, as, a, as a product line. And it's mm -hmm. so, so, so important not to wait for your accounting. You can't afford to do it. You're going to have to get, you know, direct access for, to data from your Shopify or Amazon store so that you can really keep up with profitability on a micro level also. Well, thank you so much. Lots of insight. Love, love uh, your concepts around breaking things down on a portfolio and product level. Uh, once again, this is Tyler Jeffcoat from Seller Accountant. Check him out online. We'll have a link to his resources below. Thank you.